Well, today is Friday, August the 28th, and it is a joy to bring you today's devotional commentary. I'm still in the book of Ezekiel, and today's scripture reading is Ezekiel chapters 9 through 12. And the title I've given today is The Wicked Will Not Be Spared God's Judgment. And the focus of today's devotional is going to be primarily Ezekiel chapter 9. Now, just a little bit of the background. Remember that the prophet Ezekiel is a captive in Babylon. In fact, he probably was among the first Jewish men that had been removed, perhaps even during the reign of King Jehoiakim. Now, King Jehoiakim had been taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar as a result of Jehoiakim trying to lead a rebellion against Babylon, whom Judah now found themselves serving. And most likely, Jehoiachin would have been uh, uh, taken prisoner at the same time that others like Ezekiel would have been taken prisoner as well. Now, while he is serving in Babylon, we know that Jeremiah is the prophet uh, to Judah and Jerusalem uh, back home. But we find Ezekiel now ministering in Babylon. His message is not a popular one. For God has given him the vision that Jerusalem will be destroyed because of the sin and the wickedness of God's people. Now, Ezekiel found himself contending in Babylon with false prophets who gave uh, a false sense of security that, that God wasn't going to destroy Jerusalem, that surely God wouldn't destroy Jerusalem. Well, the fact is that Ezekiel's message was to remind the people of the gross wickedness, the sin, the idolatry, the immorality that had been a part of the life of Jerusalem and Judah now for, I would say, some 150 years. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 8, God had in a vision transported Ezekiel Uh, to the courtyard of the temple in Jerusalem. And there Ezekiel was able to witness for himself the gross wickedness of the people, the idols that were even set up inside the temple itself, worshiping the sun as though it were a god. And so, lest the prophet doubt God's justice, the fact that he was going to destroy Jerusalem utterly destroyed the temple, that the city would be uh, become a, a heap of rubble. But lest that prophet think that God somehow wasn't being just, God allowed Ezekiel to see for himself the great wickedness of the people. And then in verses 17 and 18, the Lord asked uh, Ezekiel, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations they commit here. Now, moving on to our study today, in Ezekiel chapter 9, we find Ezekiel is still in the courtyard of the temple in Jerusalem. Now, again, this is a vision. God revealing his plan to the prophet whose ministry is to preach a word and a message of warning to God's people who are in Babylon, calling those people to turn from their sin and to repent. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, Ezekiel sees six men. Now, these six men were commanded by God to take destroying weapons, that is, weapons of of destruction, uh, 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 weapons that would take lives of men. Now, the six men were most likely angelic beings, and they were the guards. But there was also interesting in verse 2 that there was one among them who was clothed with linen, a white linen, and had with him a rider's inkhorn by his side. And we read in that verse 2, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Now, I personally believe that this man that was in the white linen, had the ink horn by his side, was none other than a pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 4, the man clothed in linen is commanded to take the, the marker that he has and the ink and to place on the forehead some type of mark. 
a, a mark that would signify that the men that were being marked were men who, and I quote in verse 4, would sigh and cry for all the abominations, all the wickedness that the people had committed. You know, even though most of Judah and Jerusalem were given over to wickedness and sin and idolatry and immorality, there were a few just souls, a few righteous men who still loved the Lord. And they grieved for their nation. You know, you and I as believers, we can identify with that. I I look at America, I look at the United States, and the condition that our nation is in, and I grieve. It's a great sorrow to see what we have become as a nation. And so this man in white linen, whom I think was probably uh, Christ, went through the city And all those men who were righteous men, who were mourning and grieving because of the sins of the people, were marked on the forehead with the ink. Now the six guards then were commanded to go out, and they began killing all the wicked that were in the city, sparing none, sparing either man or woman, boy or girl. If they were wicked and they did not have the mark on their forehead, they were to be slain. Now again, this is all a vision but it is an indication of the, uh, of the punishment, the judgment that Jerusalem was going to suffer. And of course, the instrument of that would be none other than Nebuchadnezzar and the great nation of Babylon. In verse 7, these uh, guards, as they go through the city, were told to leave the bodies where they were slain. And indeed, when Jerusalem fell, there were bodies stacked in the streets of that great city of Jerusalem. The sight of the slaughter was so great, and the bodies of the dead were so overwhelming, that Ezekiel says to the Lord in verse 8, Lord God, Wilt thou destroy all the residue, all the remnant, all the people, all of your people of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Now we know the answer to that was no. We also know that prophetically there would be one third who would die in the siege against Jerusalem. They would die in famine and pestilence that passed through the city. There was another third that would die in the battle for Jerusalem. And then there was one third who were the remnant. They would be taken captive to Babylon and the city of Jerusalem and the temple would be left a pile of rubble. The people said in Jerusalem though, Before that city was destroyed, and I read in verse 9, they said, The Lord hath forsaken the earth. The Lord seeth not. How foolish the false security of those people. But it was the wicked leaders that were convincing them that all was going to be well. Well, it was not. In fact, God's reply in Ezekiel 9 and verse 10 was this, Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Now, the majority would die in either the siege of Jerusalem or ultimately the final battle for that city. But those who were be spared had a mark on their head. Let me close by saying this. Like the mark on the forehead of the righteous, the cross is for the believer's testimony that his sins have been atoned by the shedding of Christ's blood on the cross, his death and bodily resurrection. We read in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Lord is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. In other words, he is a God who is a forgiving God. But be forewarned, God is holy and just, and the wicked will not be spared his judgment. Love the Lord today. If you find yourself in the way of sin and wickedness, turn from your sin to Christ. If you do not know him as your Savior, realize we read in Revelation chapter 20 that the dead, small and great, will stand before God. And that the books of God's judgment will will be open 
and the dead will be judged of those things written in the book. The sea will give up their dead. Hell will give up its dead. And every lost soul, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl who rejects Jesus Christ as Savior, they will experience God's final judgment. And we read in verse 14 of Revelation 20, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Verse 15, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Do you know Christ is your Savior? Realize that the wages of sin is death, but God in his love and grace has provided us a way of salvation through Jesus Christ, crucified for your sin and my sin, buried and raised from the dead. Won't you put your trust in him today? Be numbered among those with the mark of the cross. God bless. I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.